in a recent podcast, independent producer filmmaker John Martinez O'Fallon, the gentleman who's producing Alina of Cuba, where he casts James Franco as Fidel Castro, does a stunning, stunning uh, stance, takes a stunning stance on artistic freedom. And <laughs> this is probably uh, just as mind blowing um, answers. Answers back to John Leguizamo's call for the boycott of his film, Alina of Cuba. And we finally have this full interview, this full pad podcast that we are going to react to. Polly here on the Latino Slant. And let me um, let me just do this before we begin and uh, we dissect. Mr. Martinez O'Fallon. I apologize. I admit my wrongs. I admit my wrongs because when I am wrong, I promptly admit it. Right? That's how I can keep my integrity. That's how I can keep my principles in check. Because I too, last year, got somewhat on the boycott bandwagon. I was like, it has to be a Latino actor. And this is what a Latino is. Because of your vision. Because of your intelligence uh, and, uh, you know, uh, just take your, pers your rich perspective on all these things that, that you talked about. You, my mind has changed. And let me just say, so let me just tell you that. And let me just also say that even then last year, I was saying, well, there's all there's that there's that artistic freedom that, you know, he should be anyone should be able to play anyone. And, you know, it's an independent production. You do what you want to do, which is what you did, Mr. Martinez O'Fallon. So uh, I, uh, I I tip my hat off to you and, uh, you know, take that apology and do with, with it what you. So please, sir. But now let's get to it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this extensive podcast. We're just going to hit two parts, two parts, guys. We're going to hit on the elephant in the room that they call it. John Leguizamo's boycott call for the film. And then we're going to talk about um, why he cast James Franco in the film. So those two parts in an extensive, almost uh, hour long uh, interview that they got with the uh, with the producer. I will have the link to the whole thing. And if you want, please comment. Let me know uh, if there's anything other parts. Maybe I'll do another video. There's so much good stuff in this talk. <clears throat> really, I almost feel uh the you know uh sad that we can't cover the other the other parts because the other parts have to do with independent filmmaking vision integrity ah oh, man i i love all those things and what it does what it takes just to do a film so all right buckle up guys and let's first thank the amigos uh, clubhouse for getting this this interview it's uh, audio only and uh let's bring it up our friend Danai Escavarino uh, finally got this on her YouTube page, and I want you guys also to to take a big listen to this, and let's give uh, them a lot of props. So let's listen in, and uh, we'll take it from there. Let's tackle this massive elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Last year, John Leguizamo called you out on social media and actually called for the boycotting of this film because you have cast James Franco as the role of Fidel Castro. So how do you want to respond to that? Well, that's a mighty big elephant in the room. <laughs> but uh, I bet. first of all, I, I would like to actually express my deepest gratitude to Mr. Leguizamo because oh. his calling for boycott actually led to many very high level media professionals defending artistic freedom as it was under attack. And I think that that's something that's very needed right now. And it also led to major global players like Bill Meyer, Joe Rogan, and members of the global community help me enable, enable, enable me to gain a proper platform to shield against what I call the growing Hispanophobia that's been really heavily fueled by hardline political activists. I mean, in, in, in the media today, we see that targeting today's youth. Uh, and so I felt like this would be you know, I mean, I, I felt like, um, you know, I want to thank those people who spoke out and also because it's given the greater Hispanic community a breath of fresh air through my own endurance of the boycott attempt. Now, as far as. Wow. OK, I just want to want to take a pause there. Uh, I, 
I had no idea Joe Rogan spoke out on this. Other people spoke out on this. But even if they didn't, just listening to this gentleman is so well-spoken, so clear on purpose. I was like, oh, my God, you're absolutely right. In as far as it's it's got to be about artistic freedom first. Whether I like the product or not, at the end of the day, I will judge later on. It's all. It, it's the same with uh, freedom, fr freedom of press, uh, uh, freedom of speech. It, it's it's got to be unconditional. I can judge later on whether I like it, whether I want to buy it or not. That's a whole different argument. But uh, John Martinez O'Fallon is just on fire, and he talks about the Hispanic phobia, which I think is very interesting and very interesting. He that he talks about activists in the media. They, I believe, are ruining creative expression with a super censorship mentality that is killing, killing the arts. That is just my opinion right there. But let's uh, let's continue this. My reaction, there's something that I do really want to address. And this is actually the true, true issue and why I responded as aggressive as I did. Mm. Uh, first of all, I want to confirm that this belief, uh, this incident was to me an act of God that elevated me as a professional wow. into becoming into a more uh, a voice of integrity for the 34 million voiceless Americans of Hispanic Mexican descent who have been overlooked for a very long time. And that okay, so John is, saw this as a watershed moment for him, where Leguizamo and and and, and people. Uh, called for a boycott in this film. You know, context is everything. And uh, if you if you get all the information on this, on in this case, in front of behind the camera, it is Latino hired. And, it, you know, like I said, I, I'm not going to harp on it. I apologize during this video. But yeah, I, I, I it's, you know, it, you, when you're wrong, just admit it, take your take your lick um, and uh, and carry on. So I think it's just a lesson. It's a great lesson, just like uh, people calling for a boy, boy to boycott and cancel comedian George Lopez. Um, we got to get all the information. We have to be very educated on uh, on on these hot button hot button issues, especially when we take a stance for or against. Because what, especially in the media and in the arts, uh, like I said, because when you're killing creative creative um integrity you're you're uplifting you know the cancel mentality so just that's just a, another insight here this is just fantastic that's the culture i come from and so establishing that as my view i really want to point out and address a major lie that john leguizamo was performing major promoting for about five years now wow. that we tejanos as we call ourselves in texas really don't appreciate and uh, I'm referring to some very disrespectful attacks toward U.S. and Spanish-related Latino citizens, with this target, uh, core target being the Tex-Mex culture. And so I'll just get to the point. In 2017, uh, he, John Leguizamo actually used his platform to say publicly that all Texans were ugly, and that was very hurtful. And that was simply because the Hispanic majority disagreed with historical revisionist perspective at some of his speeches. Mm -hmm. And then he later went on to use his platform wow. again to publicly slander all members of the state of Texas and said that all Texans hate Latinos. Wow. He used the word hate. Well, this is not true. <laughs> no. And not. obvious that he's not familiar with the more widespread view of what being Latino is, especially in capitalist Tell America, him, Tell him, especially Tell him. in Texas also, where there's about 15 million of us. And when you include undocumented foreign workers and the community as a whole. Mm. So from our view, and I consider myself a representative of the Texas Hispanic group, his statements actually have caused more hurt to the integrity of those he claims to represent in the Latino and Latinx community. So while I speak with a tone of forgiveness, I can also say that I think his words have been based on a lack of knowledge of our Tex-Mex pride. And, and that's... Uh, when I speak, for, I come from a place of forgiveness. Uh, I'm not going to let it slip because of that other person's ignorance on where I come from, where people come from. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, that's the thing when you take on this mantle of uh, not, let's just say Johnny Legs is not, you know, verbally saying I represent all Latino people. I don't think he's ever done that. But he's definitely uh, used his platform to, to, 
to further what he believes are some injustices. Some I agree with, some I don't. I definitely don't agree with a lot of the times is his approach and his uh, unfiltered uh, uh, and often completely uneducated uh, in, you know, uh, opinions. But that's just me. So that's what happens when you put yourself out there like that. And here, this Latino independent producer who's trying to get films off the ground is paying attention to this. But he sees this all as a watershed moment. Uh, you know, text makes the pride and our historical covenants because the wars in our state didn't end by people just running and the demographics <laughs> kind of speak for themselves. So we all I, let, I personally all like to invite him to actually come to our fiestas or statewide celebrations and Antonio, tour them man. with me. I, you know, he'd see that our people are truly united in Tex-Mex cowboyism. Tex I mean, our dance halls cowboyism. play anything from Selena to Jason Aldean or mm. even Norteño music. Mm. And tacos and barbecue are our soul food and our restaurant Reach. networks prove such. So I just want to public I just want to publicly say that we do not we do not look down on Latin culture because that is who we are. And it's even represented in our Hispanic founded state of covenants, represented in the six flags of Texas, where we can find the flags of Spain, Mexico, the republics of Texas, all of the representatives of peacemaking covenants over era. So at the highest level, I forgive him because he's also motivated me to launch the new non-bias Hispanic cinema movement that I've announced during the opening of business in 2023. I mean, absolutely prolific, blistering, on point. Hats off to John Martinez O'Fallon. Uh, and yeah, you know, that I think it's, it's great because he used this moment. Yeah. And I imagine, you know, they got hit hard with a lot of the... Uh, of the you know, kind of boycott calls. But as he also said, we got a lot of support and attention that they probably wouldn't have gotten uh, when they were doing, doing this film. This film is actually done. This film is actually done now. So I, I want to know your comments, hit the hit, hit it right now. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and please support our channel. Let me know what you think. Let's go to one more topic of just, this amazing talk with uh, producer John Martinez O'Fallon and um, let's there is a they took questions and one question was why James Franco uh, James James how did you come about James uh, and was it the pre-sale uh, equity uh, standard deal you know where you have to get some pre-sales to finance your movie but uh, why James uh, out of all the actors that that are available out there uh, and then secondly, um, tell me a little bit about the fa financing structure of how you finance. He's asking why James. And okay, sure. The finance well, I, structure you know, of the first film. of all, I want to uh, just highlight that the, uh, the anchor of the film was actually Ana Villafaña. Mm. So she was, uh, you know, I, I Latina uh, discovered her around 2018. And uh, she was someone that I was a huge fan of and really wanted to work with because I was following her work. So she was actually the anchor. And so she came on first and then I ended up financing the film all cash because the process and that goes into like the studio politics is that, you know, when you're counting on pre-sales, it's a painful process because, you know, you're looking at years added to your time. And these are things that I've learned the hard way and trying to pursue that route. And so uh, I was actually uh, blessed to be able to anchor the film with all cash based on story value, um, uh, headline value. And also Ana Villafania, uh, her interest in being, you know, being the lead character. So he was able to 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 fund, get this movie funded on all cash. That is a miracle that never happens. But he got it done uh, based on story, based on the lead actress, who is this big lead, who's this big actress uh, out of South America. Okay, so there you go right there. So that's that's the answer to that question. And so with, as far as James, you know, I think uh, he was some we wanted someone that looked just like uh, Fidel Castro. And so because from our standpoint, it's <laughs> the artistic integrity matched with the numbers. And this is the battle that every acquisition studio goes through. And so we've, you know, coming coming through the list of of uh, actors in Hollywood. I mean, you'd be you'd be really surprised at how many Latino talents that are perceived as Latinos will not play Latino roles. Bombshell. And I won't say any names, 
but you would be very surprised Bombshell. at some of the responses that I, I had gotten I'm throughout the years surprised. asking for discussions from certain actors from the Latin American community. And so Bombshell. at the same and, and, and it makes sense because actors want to just be actors. They don't want to get pigeonholed. And here's my thing, whether you agree with that or not, don't call them out. Don't publicly shame them like Johnny Legs has done. I, I've never seen that before. That is like a, a, a disease that has started. And I think that activist mind just takes over, you know, because I, I have no idea why, what, 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 uh, what motivates, uh, whether it's him or other people, to uh, publicly shame a fellow actor, one from your tribe. That's just, that's just a no-no. That's just a no-no. And whether you agree with, 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 their, with their, their stance on being an actor, that's just um that's it's pretty petty same time you know i felt like it was the universe talking to me with james because the director wanted someone who looked just like him and there's not a lot of stars that look like him i mean i mm. think um uh point. liam neeson may but i mean yep. he's way too far off and too so old. Too old. i think that you know listening to james at least his voice and studying his material we were able to really identify someone who would work on screen and as far as the dialect uh, uh, portion of it, mm -hmm. he we actually he actually brought with him, and he put a lot of work into the into the uh, uh, early work into the character. He did a lot of research. I mean, he spent you know probably hundreds James of Franco. hours watching footage. James Franco, uh, of course, brought he's his own that. dialect co dialect coach, and so he really brought a lot to the table in terms of his transformation, um, in terms of character, and he also matched physically, which was really, you know, the big thing for us. Cause wow. I mean, I looked at John Leguizamo, he was on our list. He was someone that I was actually interested in. He looked at John, here we go. He looked at John Leguizamo. He was someone on our list. This is fascinating. This is absolutely fascinating. And the height didn't work in his situation. Cause he's about five, six or five, seven. So, you know, he didn't work. And so James was the best fit. I mean, there's there's no other catch that uh, way to really explain it. Did you catch that? Um, but the, as I said, it's, <laughs> and then the, the answer to the second question in terms mm. of the cash, um, you know, we finance. OK, we're going to stop right there. Um, I hope you caught that. I hope you caught that. And because there's so many factors, right? Name recognition, look a lot like ability uh, talent wise. Um, and he said we looked at Johnny Legs. I'll leave it at that. Okay, this has been a, a fantastic uh, uh, video as far as listening to this audio, commenting. I hope you dig it. Please comment. Please subscribe. And if it feels so kind, hit us up with a nice super chat. Uh, anything uh, is fantastic. Keep this channel going. And wherever you're at, me hinting. Keep that slant. Muy, muy fuerte.